witness the breathtaking moment as the booster enters the clouds at a striking angle, igniting its engines in a mesmerizing display of power. Join us for an awe-inspiring journey through the atmospheric entry of a rare but pivotal occurrence in space exploration. While the Falcon May 9th soar more frequently, aerospace innovation. Experience the magnificence of this high-stakes launch and delve into the world of space exploration like never before. Don't miss out on this captivating spectacle of science and technology. Hello everyone welcome back to AB Space Channel. My name is Armin your today as host. It's now been a few days since Starship's fourth integrated flight test and the company. Just released some ground footage of the booster's landing. Humanity's ambition to explore the sky has led us to discover incredible worlds, unexplored places never want to be touched by another living being in history. However, winning. Earth's imposing gravity requires a lot of energy and SpaceX remains committed to color and practice, the largest and most powerful rocket in the world. In a new test release, Space at a Vista chip made its new Volgustic and simply incredible, demonstrating SpaceX's technological potential. And it was at this time of launch that the company simply managed to broadcast the entrance live in a fantastic way. In just a little more time, SpaceX carried out the test launch of its gigantic Starship escapes from its development base on Texas soil, called Starbase. This release, called Volume 4, advances the vehicle's design toward the goal of becoming. The Fujit is almost entirely reusable. Not long ago, SpaceX itself, on December 14th, mass this year, 2004, did another test with Starhip. At that time, the launch had already generated impressive and mostly high-resolution images. An atmospheric entry is always very exciting and we have seen it here on the channel for several years. To begin with, our atmosphere. It is gigantic and covers almost 100 kilometers in height, where we have the highest concentration of gas molecules. It's not that it fits at this point, it just becomes less so. And well, when a spaceship returns from space, regardless of what it is, it always returns. At dis astronomically gigantic speeds. During re-entry, as we have already seen from the oil capsule and from Starship itself, the speed was so great that the compression of the air against the body of the spacecraft turned an immense amount of heat, resulting in extremely high temperatures. Elevated. And generally, objects in low orbit take approximately 25 minutes to enter. Until then, the only really clear footage of a return that we had were from the oil capsule tests recorded by NASA in 2014 and 2022. In these tests, the space, the ship has a high-resolution camera inside the hatch. We never see clearly what happens. Outside. Basically, the entry of registered oil. A speed of 39,000 km per hour revealed the exceptional amount of plasma generated. When aerodynamic pressure makes the atmosphere glow. Similar is what happens when the space rock streaks across the sky. Now, the launch was definitely not perfect, as one of the engines failed, in addition to external problems and loss of parts. However, Starship's Vol 4 was historic. In detail, the Vol 4 was an important mission not only for SpaceX, but also for NASA. The fire is to be the crucial when we start the Artemis mission. Scheduled for September 2006 towards the year. To the decade, naturally in orbit, after reaching planned altitude, Starship has a goal of land in the ocean, which was not achieved in the last launch. Almost an hour after launch, SpaceX managed to recover the Starship live broadcast signal. The images then revealed something. Unbelievable. The company managed to capture the signal from the moment the soared ships came to rest. At thousands of degrees, creating an impressive bubble of plasma around it. Unlike the transmission of previous launch, the connection via Starlink satellites was much more stable and allowed. Best possible view of this artificial meteor. This is how we would see a small asteroid tearing through the heaven if they could like a good camera. Usually a plasma bubble like this prevents communication, but as the input was stable the signal managed to maintain itself and we had something unbelievable. Right before our eyes. The entry lasted almost 20 minutes. This video was accelerated here so that our video doesn't become gigantic. Just enjoy the bubble. 
of plasma being created by our natural shield known as the atmosphere. And thanks to technology, aerospace, we achieved the feat of re-entering without breaking into thousands of pieces. Of any in this way, the fourth release demonstrates how persistence can improve the project. The captured images this time they were only possible due to the perfection of the rocket that had already exploded previously and generated impressive sequences. This is all part of the process so that maybe one day we can be present on the moon and later on Mars. But these were not the only records of re-entries of affection. Others are even more incredible. However, what Starship achieved this time is simply different and historic, a vision of a re-entry that no one has ever seen before, not even astronauts when they return from space. Finally, we have another great feat of space exploration, and how impressive it is that Simple Test's rocket can generate such incredible images. While short, it gives more details into the exact orientation, engine use, and even proximity to the intended landing site. This comes in addition to more comments from Musk talking about the booster's landing burn and why they might try and catch it on the next attempt. Based on the time between launches going back to IFT-1, the fifth flight could be sooner than many think. Here I'll go more in-depth into the new booster footage, the launch timeline, catching challenges, and more. Earlier this morning, SpaceX finally showed off some footage from additional angles of the booster landing in the Gulf of Mexico. It starts with what looks like a view from the air and then switches to possible but out at sea in the intended landing location. The booster comes in at an angle and lights its engines right as it enters the clouds, which not only slows but helps orient the booster nearly perfectly vertically. Unfortunately, SpaceX cuts the video back to the onboard footage right as the booster makes contact with the water, so we don't get a view of it bobbing before eventually tipping over. Either way, the initial lead-up and the engine light showcases some of the exact goals SpaceX had with the mission and landing over the water. SpaceX stressed before the launch that the fourth flight test turned their focus from achieving orbit to demonstrating the ability to return and reuse Starship and Super Heavy. Specifically, they were quoted saying, the primary objectives will be executing a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico with the Super Heavy booster and achieving a controlled entry of Starship. Focusing back on the video, you can see some large flames likely related to the one engine. That didn't successfully relight for the landing burn. However, as designed, the other 12 Raptor engines were plenty to slow the stage for. A soft landing. For reference, this landing process simulates an eventual flight profile that brings the booster back to the launch site and performs the exact burn just above the tower. As it slows down, it lowers between the two chopstick arms, which then close under the catch points of the booster. It's important to point out that while on the surface, the recent booster splashdown is impressive, there are even more factors to consider on an actual catch attempt. For example, not only do obvious things like the speed and altitude of the stage matter, but much more precise factors like its exact rotation slash orientation to position catching. Points in line with the arms. Combine that with the fact that the entire launch complex is static with the exception of the chopsticks and it will be an incredibly difficult process. Fortunately for SpaceX, they seem to be very close to trying. Another interesting detail about the footage is the fact that some of the camera angles for the most part look static. This would suggest that SpaceX landed the booster at basically the exact spot they had planned beforehand. Comments from Elon after the flight also supported this with him mentioning that the booster successfully landed at a precise location. For an actual catch attempt, the precision needs to be feet if not even closer, which lowers the margin of error. Landing on drone ships is one thing, but being caught out of the air is another. Either way, this launch was a great step in that direction. Looking at the footage one more time, in conjunction with the onboard telemetry gives us even more details. The onboard view and data highlight that right before the booster ignites its engines is traveling around 1,200 kilometers an hour and is within one kilometer of the ground. It initially ignites all 13 engines before switching to just the innermost three as it passes through the clouds. In just the next 15 seconds or so, 
the booster manages to reduce its speed from 1200 km an hour to a low of 9 km an hour right around the time of contact. This is quite impressive and supports even more ambitious plans in the near future. Initially, after the launch, Musk tweeted that he thought they should try and catch the booster on the next attempt. In addition, in an interview with Alien Space, he was quoted saying, I need to regroup with the team and confirm that there aren't any other known issues. But I think given that the booster came to a precise location, came to a potentially zero velocity landing in the ocean, I think we should probably try to catch it with the tower arms on the next flight. Once on these comments, he seemed serious about the attempt to the point where a very well could be a possibility. The concerns would be damaging the tower or nearby infrastructure, however SpaceX is in the process of building another tower and likes to take the occasional risk. As far as when the next attempt could be, looking at the time between the past four launches, it might be very soon. In less than three months, they were able to get ready to launch the world's most powerful rocket. As far as whether or not they'll be able to improve from the 84 days it took on the last flight is not clear. If they do, it likely won't be far off. Either way, before we know it, SpaceX should be getting ready for our fifth attempt. In a statement released by the company not long after the mission they said, the fourth flight of Starship made major strides to bring us closer to a rapidly reusable future. Its accomplishments will provide data to drive improvements as we continue rapidly. Developing Starship into a fully reusable transportation system designed to carry crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars and beyond. In preparation for this most recent flight, SpaceX made a decent number of changes and upgrades to help ensure it was successful. For example, in one statement SpaceX highlighted that, to accomplish this, several software and hardware upgrades have been made to increase overall reliability and address lessons learned. From Flight 3, they went on to say, the SpaceX team will also implement operational changes, including the jettison and the Super Heavy's hot stage following boost back to reduce booster mass. For the final phase of flight, we now know that this jettisoning was successful and we could end up seeing it again. Besides that change, there were a few very important upgrades made related to specific problems that occurred on Flight 3. On that test, following stage separation, Super Heavy initiated its boost back burn and all 13 engines ran successfully until 6 engines began shutting down, triggering a benign early boost back shutdown. SpaceX confirmed that the booster then continued to descend until attempting its landing burn, which commands the same 13 engines used during boost back to perform the planned final slowing for the rocket before a soft touchdown in the water. But the six engines that shut down early in the boost back burn were disabled from attempting the landing burn startup. In a relevant statement, SpaceX said, the most likely root cause for the early boost back burn shutdown was determined to be a continued filter blockage where liquid oxygen is supplied to the engines, leading to a loss of inlet pressure in engine oxygen turbo pumps. As far as upgrades, they said, super heavy boosters for Flight 4 and beyond will get additional hardware inside oxygen tanks to further improve propellant filtration capabilities. And utilizing data gathered from Super Heavy's first landing burn attempt, additional hardware and software changes are being implemented to increase startup reliability of the Raptor. Engines and landing conditions. Based on what we just saw, these upgrades were a great addition. SpaceX just released some new footage of the booster landing which helps highlight the precision and accuracy of this process. It went so well that they might even try and catch the booster during the next flight. Attempt. With Starship launches getting continually faster and faster, this could be very soon. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time